Joining us now on the news line is Roger Stone. Uh, you saw him. He was uh, he was arrested uh, down here in in Florida in, in Broward County on uh, early Friday morning by a uh, a, a SWAT team like crew of 29 FBI agents. As he said on uh, somewhere uh, recently, they treated him like El Chapo. They treated him like El Chapo, uh, John Gotti, Whitey Bulger, Al Capone, John Dillinger. Uh, they got, I think he got more than all of those guys combined. I know when they took down Whitey Bulger, it was five guys. One, one FBI agent, four L.A. cops, and he'd killed, he was you know, probably killed 30 people. Roger Stone, did you did you feel that, uh, you, did you feel some kind of uh, uh, power? I mean, in spite of everything else, when they when you realize there were 29 FBI agents coming after you and some of them dressed up in uh, tactical gear with, uh, with automatic weapons? Uh, not some of them, all of them carrying uh, assault weapons, sidearms, giant battering ram in case they needed to... Uh, smash my front door in uh, 17 armored vehicles in the front yard. Uh, I live on a canal. There were two amphibious units with frog men in the back. Um, uh, they, uh, they, uh, there's a helicopter overhead. They sealed off the street, except for CNN, of course. Uh, you know, I'm charged with a nonviolent crime. I have no previous criminal record. I don't own a firearm. There were no guns in the house. I don't, my passport has expired. I'm not a flight risk. The judge in this case gave me a surety bond, which proves that I'm, that the right. court doesn't believe so that So basically I'm you got, risk. you got personal recognizance. I mean, how absurd is that? 29 agents and then they cut you loose. You didn't even have to put up a dime of bail. Uh, but it, the, the point is they wanted the, the footage for their friends at CNN. The producer uh, and the cameraman or the crew uh, outside my house happens to be a follower named Josh Campbell, who's formerly an assistant to FBI Director James Comey and an employee of the FBI. He says he was just there on a hunch. So, um, no, I think this was theatrics to try to intimidate me uh, and to try to send a signal to others uh, that they need to say what they're told to say when I come to trial or this can happen to them. I think the American people are revolted over this. Uh, the reaction uh, has been overwhelming. Many, many people going to stonedefensefund.com, which is my legal defense fund, because they've destroyed me financially. That's part of the plan. That way uh, they can force me to plead guilty to some crime I didn't commit like they did the General Flynn because I just don't have the resources to fight the taxpayer-funded witch hunt of Robert Mueller. Now, this happened right after the, the hearings for William Barr, the new uh, attorney general designate, who's probably going to be approved any day now. Do you think uh, William Barr, who's going to be the new boss of Bob Mueller, whose wife is in a prayer group with uh, Bob Mueller's wife, do, do you think William Barr signed off on this raid? Uh well, I don't, I don't think he has the authority. I'd like to know whether the current FBI director, Christopher Wray, has signed off on it. I'd like to know whether the acting attorney general, uh, Matthew Whitaker, who I have many friends who have a high regard for, signed off on this. Uh, it's hard to believe. They have to have spent a half million dollars uh, on this. They then issued a, uh, a search warrant. They completely ransacked my wife. I mean, recognize, I opened the front door staring down the barrel of two assault weapons aimed at my chest. Uh, I, I came outside. I was told to put my hands behind my back, and I was handcuffed. I was wearing a Roger Stone did nothing wrong T-shirt uh, and a pair of gym shorts, barefooted. Uh, I, was taken out, I was taken out to the street. Um, my wife is hit impaired. She's virtually deaf. Uh, she was asleep on the second floor. She was not woken up by the sound. They kept saying, where is she? Where, who's in the house? I said, my wife. They said, where is she? I said, she's in the second floor bedroom. I was afraid that they were going to think she wasn't complying with their orders and shoot her. She was also taken out of the house barefoot and in her nightgown, forced to stand in the middle of the street. She's charged with no crime. Uh, they terrorized my dogs, my my, the Yorkshire Terriers, the, the puppy, uh, Pee Wee, still won't come out from under the bed, still shaking. Uh, this was completely unnecessary. They know I'm represented by a lawyer. 
They could have contacted my attorney, and I would have certainly surrendered willingly. Their indictment is for nonviolent process crimes. It's a clock of shift, if I may. I said shift to those. I, I know, I know. The congressman from, from uh, Southern California. Yes. Hey, For Roger, Roger, it, it appears, though, that, that uh, you know, that they were asking you fairly innocuous questions, these uh, Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee, and some of them Democrats as well. But it, it also appears that you're charged with not answering truthfully to innocuous uh, questions that didn't really mean anything, whether you answered them yes or no. Why wouldn't, why, why didn't you answer them truthfully, to be honest with you? Well, I, I, well I, I did answer them truthfully. Until you read the entire transcript, it's impossible to judge the, the excerpts to see them in context, in, in all honesty. To, to be perjury, it must have both intent and materiality. Uh, the fact that these questions were innocuous, were meaningless, uh, I was uh, there voluntarily. Uh, I was there for four and a half hours. I contend that I did not mislead the committee on any material point, and I'll prove that in court. But, I mean, what they, I, I read, again, you read the indictment, it says, you, you, they ask you, uh, did you have uh, email and phone conversations with, with one of the other uh, people who, who's a principal in this? And you say, I just had phone you're conversations. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. But you yeah, had email, right. you had email uh, conversations. Right. Right. No, it was actually text message. You're text right. Message. Let me put it in context. I, I forgot that there was a text message that's entirely exculpatory and proves that everything I told the committee was true. You're right. I did forget that. So what, what uh, you're... Again, uh, I, I, an honest uh, mistake of memory is not perjury. Yes, I forgot the existence of some text... Well, Devin Nunes, uh, the congressman from California, was the chairman of the committee that you were testifying before at the time. Now he's the ranking member. He, he said yesterday on uh, Fox Business Channel that, it, that uh, now that they've indicted you for lying to Congress, they should next indict uh, Comey, McCabe, Strzok, and Page, just for starters, just for starters. I mean, forget Clapper and Brennan. What, what's your uh, response to that? I agree with that, but let me be very clear, Howie. My attorneys will be calling Adam Schiff to the stand. My attorneys will be calling uh, Eric Swallowswell to the stand. We'll be, we'll be calling members of the committee, such as Trey Gowdy, to see what they thought I was saying. So we'll get a chance to examine some of their lies. In my hearing, Adam Schiff insisted the FBI did inspect the DNC computer server, speaking of lying. So these guys hide behind their congressional immunity. They defame me constantly. They have been egging Robert Mueller on with this false claim uh, of, of, uh, uh, of WikiLeaks collusion, which doesn't exist. I am deeply disappointed that Steve Bannon appears to be the government's chief witness against me. Yes, I exchanged emails with him. He asked me about a public event, and I responded with two pieces of information from that morning's newspaper. Materiality, what would the point be? Why would I hide that? So it, it is, uh, it, it is uh, highly contrived. I'm being persecuted because I'm a friend and supporter of Donald Trump's for 40 years. Because my book, The Clinton's War on Women, you know, was the definitive takedown of Bill, Hillary, and, their, and uh, Webb Hubble's daughter, Chelsea. So uh, that's why I'm being persecuted. So, so you don't think Bill Barr is trying to deliver a message to Donald Trump here, the new, the new attorney general designated? <laughs> I don't think he has the authority to do so yet. Uh, you know, I, I am troubled by his appointment, given his long attachments to the swamp and to the deep state and his previous service for George H.W. Bush. Uh, he wrote a memo critical of, of Mueller. That seems to be his chief qualification, and he's been previously confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Whether, any, whether anybody is going to give this, this investigation any actual oversight remains to be seen. But this abuse is a perfect example of why somebody needs to, to narrow the focus of this investigation. Howie, notice I wasn't charged with conspiracy, that I wasn't right. charged it's, with it's about the thinnest material. It's about the thinnest federal indictment I've ever read, actually, Roger. You know, it's there. I mean, there's, there's nothing here. You know, you know I mean, 
I, I don't see anything. Let me read you something from the Wall Street Journal editorial on Saturday. At one point, Mr. Stone griped to a Breitbart editor that he wanted to tell then-Trump campaign chairman Steve Bannon about his WikiLeaks efforts, but Mr. Bannon, quote, doesn't call me back, unquote. According to emails released by the New York Times, the Breitbart editor prodded Mr. Bannon to, quote, call Roger, unquote, to which Mr. Bannon responded, I've got important stuff to worry about. Now, that doesn't sound like you're in a conspiracy with anybody in the Trump campaign to me, and that's the New York Times reporting that. Well, and even that mischaracterizes the initial email. My, my source, the tipster who told me about the, the WikiLeaks uh, uh, disclosures, which Julian Assange himself disclosed to the nation on CNN in June, pardon me, July of 2016, and again on Fox uh, in August of 2016, uh, told me the stuff was dynamite. When the reporter says, is what Assange has good, and I said, yes, it is, I would tell Bannon that if he called me back. That doesn't show that I knew the substance or content, only that it, I had I'd gotten a tip that it was significant. By the way, Howie, it was significant. That's what this is all about. If we can create a controversy about where the emails come from, maybe the American voters will be distracted from the content of the emails. It shows the venal corruption and the dirty tricks of the Clinton operation. Does President Trump have anything to worry about? Not for me. I, uh, he has nothing to do with this. Uh, yes, I had many phone calls with him in 2016. We've been friends for 40 years. I've been on his team politically for 40 years. I worked very hard independently of his boneheaded campaign because he was the best thing in his campaign. His speeches, his rallies, his, his debates, that's what won this election not the amateurs that were over at the headquarters. Uh, and the idea that I would need to curry favor with them is a joke. Who was the senior uh, Trump so, uh, this official, uh, Roger? Who was the senior Trump official who directed you? I assume, I assume, I assume that, uh, well, nobody directed me. That is just a falsehood. In the, it's in the indictment, it, though, but it, you said you assume. Who, who, are they who, do they, who do you think they're talking I, I, about? I, 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 I assume that's Jeffrey Epstein's new friend, Steve Bannon. That's who I assume it is, but I have no email that indicates that. That appears to be something Mr. Bannon is prepared to testify to. And then the other, the junior campaign official, I think that's Rick Gates, a man seeking a reduction in his sentence. Right, that's for Paul Manafort's business partner, who's, I believe, already pleaded guilty to multiple felonies or is going to plead guilty to multiple Correct. felonies. Correct. Uh, what, Correct. What, what was your uh, what was your take? Uh, what what grade do you give uh, Steve Martin on his impersonation of you Saturday night on Saturday Night Live? Uh, you know, I really really like Steve Martin. I think he's hysterical. Uh, he's a wild and crazy guy, but I think he missed the mark. I mean, if I if I act like that, I'd be surprised. Kind of had my clothes down right, but that was the worst thing about this. You see, if they had allowed me to turn myself in, I could have gone in for my mugshot wearing a suit and tie. Instead, uh, you know, I look like hell. So that's, that disturbs me more than anything. Did you smile? That's the advice that public relations consultants always give now. Smile for the mugshot and that it, uh, it won't live for as long on social media. Uh, I have a faint smile, I would say. <laughs> Are you going to have a faint smile tomorrow? Well, I don't think I have any choice. I mean, look, I came out of the courthouse uh, in Fort Lauderdale after being shackled hand and foot uh, in leg irons, uh, sitting in a holding cell with three African-American gentlemen, all of whom strongly support the president's recent criminal justice reform legislation. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, I tried to speak. And I was shouted down by crazed leftists and half the media. But I've, I haven't seen this many cameras since O.J. Simpson. So uh, I suspect there'll be another media circus outside the courthouse tomorrow. I'm, let's just say I'm a very polarizing figure. When I landed at the D.C. airport today, a lot of people were waving at me with their middle fingers. One, one last question, very briefly. Uh, if you could channel Richard Nixon tonight, your uh, mentor politically, what would he tell you to do tomorrow when you go at, to the courthouse? He would say this. A man is not finished when he's defeated. He's only finished when he quits. I will never quit. And I will fight to the bitter end to vindicate myself uh, and to prove that uh, the uh, allegations against me 
are false. In the meantime, I just pray that people will go to stonedefensefund.com because, Howie, my lawyers are projecting a $2 million legal bill to defend myself. Just an astronomical amount of money. Roger Stone, good luck tomorrow, and we appreciate you joining us on the show this evening. Thank you so much. I'm Howie Carr. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more breaking news coverage, exclusive interviews, and great videos, click over here to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And don't forget to download the free Newsmax TV app. Newsmax TV, it's real news for real people.